What's going on, y'all? This Ty kills him, and today we're gonna dive within the sound wave of Chosen. Now y'all gonna see what makes us the chosen ones, cause we're awesome. We're the chosen ones. The life of the chosen hold the composure when dealing with folk who don't notice you focus on being doper as you get older. With every year I grow closer to consciousness, further from nonsense shit. I love this song a lot because uh, it actually has my son on it. Um, he actually decided to say what he wanted to say, put together his own words to introduce to each verse and things of that nature. The whole idea behind it was I'm the chosen one with plans to pass the torch over to my son being the chosen one. Right out the gate, we start with the difference between me and the competition. I'm able to stay relaxed, stay in the cut while I'm dealing with all of these people who don't notice that I'm greater than I was yesterday. When you're elevating in front of people, sometimes it gets difficult for them to understand that the level they knew you at yesterday no longer exists. And then I go further to expound on that to say, you know, every every year I get closer to being conscious, being aware of each move I make, being aware of the things that's happening around me, the people that's around me, so forth and so on. So since I become more conscious of these things, I move further away from the nonsense. So all of the, you know, the dumb stuff I did as a kid, fighting, shooting, running the streets, things of that nature, I'm far beyond that. So for the people that knew me for that, it's just kind of reiterating that I'm no longer that guy. So the person you knew yesterday is a totally different person than who I am today because I grow daily. So when my content get too deep for people to peep the growth, send six days out of the week and speak to you and Jesus close. It seem in most hear the people don't hear a thing I spoke. So when I get too deep for people to peep the growth. So if you think of it, um, just simple as planting something, you have to put a seed in the ground. It goes deep. So a lot of the times in those early stages, people can't even notice that it's growing. So that's why I say that when it goes too deep for people to peep the growth, I explain to them their idea of growth is sinning six days out of the week. And then they go in on their specific day and whatever their religion requires. In this case, I'm thinking more of a Sunday because that's when they go and they speak like them and Jesus is close. Where six days prior to, it wasn't about growth at all. I also uh, play on that to say, it seems like most people say they get it, but they don't really get it. it it's kind of like that old uh, rappers not getting support kind of issue where things that I'll post on Instagram will get a lot of attention. They're like, oh, you're really smart. There's lots of likes, there's lots of engagement, so forth and so on. But I've been rapping like this since forever. So it's saying that they, they see what's online but they miss the message that's been there the whole time that I've been delivering in the music. When the things I wrote are the same things I post on the gram with the meanest quotes. And you like it, but I ain't gotta be psyched to know you ain't keeping my dream afloat. If you don't get it when you listen, the problem isn't the lyrics, it's the lack of living spirits that's near us to the point that we speak and we don't even hear us. I then explained that uh, I don't have to be a psychic to understand that your likes on social media does not mean that you're working on keeping my dream afloat. It doesn't mean that you're supporting me. It doesn't mean that you care for my well-being. It just means that you're on a site that promotes liking pictures and posts and things of that nature. This fits right into the reason why you're watching this video within the sound wave. Me saying that if you don't get it when you hear it, it's not the lyrics. It's not what I'm putting into the music. It's not that these things don't make sense. It means that a lot of the times your spirit isn't elevated to a level where you can understand what's being said. I follow up by saying uh, to the point where we speak and we don't even hear us. I am of the neighborhood of the people that I'm promoting my music to. I am of the cloth that the people I'm promoting to. I am of the people, but a lot of the times they can't hear me because they can't elevate past where they are to see where we should go. Look in the mirror, don't recognize our appearance. It's apparent clearer with my distance from people that we ain't equal. I'm a man in depot. It's hard to grasp the thoughts that fall out my cerebral. My mind is racing, I'm pacing, can't stand adjacent to the man I was the day before. It's just hard to grasp the thoughts that I come up with. Fall out my cerebral because these are the things that are always packed into my mind. So. Sometimes without even meaning to, I drop jewels. Even playing off of the way that we look in the mirror and we don't recognize who we are. Like a lot of people that's out here doing evil, doing wrong. You know, there's people out here that's robbing people. 
that would never consider themselves to be a robber. People that will murder somebody and don't consider themselves a murderer. People that do drugs but don't consider themselves an addict. So it's just saying that, you know, that mirror is held up in front of us. I'm gonna be the one to hold up that mirror and you may not even realize that it's you that I'm showing. And the further I get away from this demographic, the more I realize how bad it is, how hard it is for us to see ourselves. And even I from the Marvel would say, say no more. My days are pure at night, write these amazing scores. My mind goes all the time. Every time I see something, it's a, uh, why is this here? Or why isn't it like this? So since my mind is always going, I can't even stand next to the person that I was yesterday, which goes back to how I start diverse. The guy that I was yesterday is no longer here. He doesn't exist. And then I'm saying that me tomorrow will be way better than the person today. The me from tomorrow will look at me today and say, Say no more. You got more to learn. You got more learning to do. You got more growing up to do. The chosen one had a chosen one. He passed the torch to his only son. Love for the streets or love for his peeps. He chose his son, but he'll die for what he believes from a smoking gun. I'd like to think that these opening lines to the second verse are pretty clear. Uh, but just in case it wasn't, it's just saying that I'm the chosen one. And because I am, I had a chosen one. Because he is of my bloodline he's gonna be considered the chosen one as well. Um, and I'm prepared to pass that torch over to him. And then I go into, you know, where I had to face that crossroads where I went from running the streets to, okay, maybe I can't do this anymore and I need to take care of my son. So where I was, you know, put between that, that fork in the road, I decided to go on the side of my son, um, but I don't change my integrity. So even though I'm not running the streets anymore, uh, I stand on my morals and I'm willing to die behind it. From selling pip to selling slip to those folk that do coke and rum. Learn from his lack of shit, never hold his tongue. Product of Lillian, I was our only son. No daughters either, the only one. Chosen one. Bit of insight of what my past was like, where, you know, from selling sniff, we're talking cocaine. Not so much cocaine, more like crack, uh, but sniff sounds way better. <laughs> the selling piff, you know, it's a strain of weed, but that wasn't the only strain that I sold. And I'm just giving you the types of people that it was sold to. These are people that didn't necessarily look like me or act like me. This is a line that I live by today. Uh, I learned from my lack of shit, never hold his tongue. Because I didn't have anything, I wasn't afraid to say what was on my mind. What could you do to me? Me talking, you know, and speaking out loud and speaking my mind, what are you gonna take from me? You gonna take my money? Okay, if I'm living on the edge and every day I'm, you know, can possibly die or get killed, even for not speaking, that became uh, something I stopped being afraid of. So because of my circumstances that I grew up with, I can't hold my tongue. It's not in my nature to do so. Product of Lillian, that is my mother's name. And I was the only son, her only child. She didn't have any other kids. So it's just me playing off of being the only child, which makes me the chosen one. So I learned to work on my own. I don't owe no one. Put a period after the O and O. In the line I just did it, you'll see what my number is. Know the number abbreviated will be reversed when you see me make it. Being an only child, you learn to work things out by yourself. You learn to stop looking for help. And because I did that, I don't owe anyone. Wherever I am in life, I can honestly sit there and say, okay, I don't owe anybody for my success or failures or anything of that nature. It's just me. It's no one to put it on. And then um, a follower put a period after the O in no. And if you do that, then you have N-O period one. That's making it going from no one to number one. And I explain that in the next lines because number abbreviated. And if you reverse number abbreviated, which is N-O, that'll be O-N, that's on. You know, when you see me make it, we gonna be on. It, it also goes in where uh, even in all of these things that I believe that makes me the chosen one, I still have my flaws. So I go right into admitting that a lot of the times when I see the hatred, I'll get wasted behind it. I may have a drink to forget about it. I may go zone out to forget about it. Or my number one addiction, it goes straight to the music. I get lost in the music and I get high off of that. So admitting that the hate sometimes clouds me and I need to get wasted to get away from it. And for all of my gym rats out there, y'all fully understand how this works, where you can go out to the club, you can have a whole bunch of drinks, you get drunk, you wake up, still hungover, but you still gotta hit the uh, gym. So this is me saying I still run shit inebriated. 
So even if I'm intoxicated, even after I have that drink, even as, even as it seemed like I'm slipping and I don't lost my way, fact is, I'm still on my game, I'm still running it even with those mistakes and setbacks. Getting wasted to block the hatred like a club hopping gym rat. I still run shit inebriated. I'm in the lead of the league of the sacred. Fighting with lightning in the clouds to rain down on the team of Satan. There's a, a sacred few, the chosen ones. And me saying that, okay, these are the elite and then it's me. Wherever you see the elite, I'm ahead of that. While people are looking to reach a certain level, I'm saying I'm up there with the gods. So that's why I said I'm um, fighting with lightning to rain down on the team of Satans. Just to say, for all of the hatred, all of the haters that's on this way lower level than me, my fights are no longer with the fist. It's now coming lightning fast and it's gonna have to rain down on them because they're not on my level. The world is yet to see my impact. I guess I'll be forgotten if I don't give them tracks. The present best of me. I am King Saliva Brink. Sixteens that drop, giving your mind a ring. We kick off the third verse with me admitting that a lot of people don't realize how great I am. It's at no fault of my own. I am still great, but it's just you may not know it yet. And then I admit my own mortality to say that, you know, I could easily be forgotten. But... I'm not gonna allow that because I'm giving you guys a blueprint. I'm giving you guys an autobiography. All of my music is giving you all of these jewels that I have in my brain. And every time you hear a song, a verse, a quote, a line, a post, anytime you hear anything from me, that is the present best of me. So you're always getting the best of me. And it goes back to the beginning where I say, I'm better than who I was yesterday. So the best me yesterday can't touch me today. So I'm always elevated. Sometimes it gets so heavy. The things that I give, it's gonna give your mind a ring. If you've ever been, you know, uh, for all of fight fans or people that's been in fights or boxing or something of that nature, if you ever get hit really hard, you get that ring, that, that ringing where you kind of like lose it all and you see those stars and things of that nature. I'm saying that my lines hit like that. The punch lines literally feel like punches. Whether wedded or some kind of thing, I'm married to the music minus the designer rings. For that matter, I'd rather have fat of pockets than designer jeans. Say whether wedded, that's like your wedding ring or some kind of thing just going into like, you know, the punches to the head. I then go from there just to say that I am married to the music. That is my first marriage. That is my first love. That is where I am. Anybody that deals with me has to understand that. My marriage with music doesn't require any designer rings. It's just us. Me and the music know exactly what it is. We don't have rings flashing to say what it, what we're doing and what's going on and that we're married. It's just clear. If you know, you know, and if you don't, me and the music has that bond. I jump straight from there to where the argument or the issue that most artists have internally, where it's, do I give them me or do I give them the stuff that's going to get me the money? Now, without losing myself, I admit that I'd rather have more money, but I also explain that before I spend a bunch of money on designer jeans or designer clothes, give me the money. I'd rather have fatter pockets than designer jeans. I'll take some cheap jeans with stacks in them before I take designer jeans that's flat. <laughs> Shades don't cover my eyes so you can see the pain behind what I'ma bring. Nostalgia and mama's dreams to raise a black man alone in Baltimore that will die something. My life is laid out in the songs that once the movies made, you can see the right and my wrongs, which makes you afraid. Seeing the pain and living out uh, mama's dreams and, you know, uh, for anybody that's unfamiliar with Baltimore, it's a hard city to the point where, you know, it, it's a blessing to go outside and come back home. A very, very underrated blessing. People are getting killed here left and right. So I know that my mother has dreams for me, but even bigger than that, I have to be alive to even halfway approach those dreams. And then I say that my life is the movie because it's off of my life, the movie album. And I'm saying once it's played, once people can look back at my life and see it, they're gonna notice that even when I was wrong, I had the right intentions. When we're talking about a meeting of the minds or a war of the words, it becomes scary when it's like, okay, even when he lose, he wins. Just to say that I'm that type of fighter, I have that, that type of wit, that even my losses look like gains, 
even when I'm wrong, you can see where I was right. Growing up round dope strips and wear Uzi spray. My life's a war story, no shit, wait till the movies play. No bitch assness inside the fam, wolves and sheep clothing. But what about the sheep that decide to disguise the lamb? And wolves clothing to clock dollars and read out the pack of wolves because they tried their hand. You know, at the time, this is when uh, Diddy was running with the uh, bitch assness, just to say, like, you know, people got a lot of bitch assness in them. And although that word is funny, it's a lot of truth behind it. We can't really have, like, people that's not down to ride. You, you can't be in the fam if you're not riding for the fam. Now, that could be your gang. That could be your last name. That's who I'm riding for, my last name. I'm riding for my team. Um, and if you're not doing the same, then we're not on the same plane. We can't rock the same. We're used to seeing the wolves in sheep's clothing. We know we're used to seeing that, but that would have to imply that the people that they're, they're around, that they're running this thing on, is sheep. Me and my team, we're not sheep. And if we were sheep, we're saying that the sheep that disguised the lamb in wolves' clothing. We disguised them, we put them in wolves' clothing, and we put them around the wolves to figure out what they're doing. Once we figure out what they're doing, then we can take that back to the, you know, take that back to the bank. And we're gonna make money off of that. And and this whole idea of thing, the wolves, this is the system. This is the labels. This is the companies. This is the corporations. Those are the wolves. So we are sitting here, putting together our plan and sending them over there where the wolves are, figuring out what the wolves are doing, and then we're gonna one-up them in their own game. Either way, I am king. It'll be saying when we make it to the promised land. Look no further because I'm the man. Ho, ho, ho. And I end, I end the whole thing with, regardless of how you look at it, whether you see me as the wolf or the sheep, whether you see me as the spectator standing on the side, whether you see me as the person that's fighting in the clouds, or you see me as down on the ground with the mere mortals. My whole thing, the whole idea of all of this is I'm a king. I'm a king, and you're gonna notice that once you see everything I'm saying come to fruition. You're gonna see that. And I'm looking at that as the promised land. That is my promise to you. When we land here, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll get it, and you'll say, man, he, he, he really is about that. He really is a king, he really is a god. And then I ended with the most cockiest thing that I could possibly say. Regardless of all of this stuff, whatever you're looking for, look no further because I'm the man. For whatever it is. I'm the man. You're looking for you're looking for the God, I'm the man. You're looking for the king, I'm the man. Whatever you're looking for, I'm the man. So we're just ending with that, and it makes it pretty clear that after all of this information I throw out there that I am the chosen one, whether you see it or not. I'm Ty Kills and riding within the sound wave of the chosen one, and of course I am the chosen one. Bong. Ho ho ho, stop that. We just killed that. Ty Kills and Khalil, my last movie. Boom!